Tonight on the MTN News, beloved members of a gospel group gone. Uh, a peace in your spirit you felt connected with, you felt um, heard, you felt loved. We remember the Nellens killed in a crash in Wyoming, passing through Billings on their way to a show. Plus waiting for Kamala to choose her next VP. We'll take you to the campaign trail ahead of an announcement for a prospective Democratic running mate and a booming business. We just started detailing friends' cars and then friends were telling other friends and it just kind of got bigger. Meet this Lewis and Clark eighth grader starting his own business to pay for an epic educational experience. The MTN News starts right now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the MTN 430 News. I'm Andrea Lewis. Tonight, the gospel music community shocked and saddened after three members of America's most cherished gospel music group die in a plane crash in Wyoming over the weekend. The group, the Nellens, was headed for a pit stop in Billings on their way to play at an Alaskan cruise when the plane went down in Gillette, Wyoming. Hannah McDonald has more. years, the Neelands made fans and friends everywhere they sang. Just being able to unite in voice, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an amazing thing. At Daywind Records in Hendersonville, the gospel group made music and got to know the label's president, Ed Leonard. You don't expect, you know, a group that's really in its prime uh, to, to have something like this happen. Three members of the Neelands died in a plane crash on Friday. Jason and Kelly Neelan Clark and their daughter, Amber Neelan Kistler. Four other people on board died too. There were no survivors. They did a cover of Scars in Heaven that's really amazing. And when you put it in the context of, of what we're dealing with now, it's, um, it really resonates. Autumn Neelan Streetman, the younger daughter and soon to be mother, was not on the same plane as her family. Leonard says the Neelands had a special way of connecting with others, which came from Kelly. When you talked to her, you just felt uh, a peace in your spirit. You felt connected with, you felt um, heard, you felt loved. The band members were heading to Seattle to perform on a Christian gospel music cruise when their plane apparently suffered an autopilot issue and crashed in northern Wyoming. The world's going to miss the music and the ministry. Um, I'll miss the relationships that we had. In Hendersonville, Hannah McDonald, News Channel 5. Speculation continues over who Vice President Kamala Harris may pick as her running mate. A decision could be made this week. Our Joe St. George has a closer look at the leading contenders for the job and why some names are being mentioned more than others. Vice President Kamala Harris has a big decision to make. Who does she want next to her on the Democratic ticket? How does Harris Shapiro sound? Shapiro's the governor of Pennsylvania. What about Harris Kelly? Kelly is a senator from Arizona. Harris Bashir, the governor of Kentucky. Harris Cooper, the governor of North Carolina. Harris Buttigieg, the secretary of transportation. All have been floated as leading contenders to get selected. Political odds makers at the gambling site Odds Checker currently have Senator Kelly, followed by Governor Shapiro, as the favorites. And both have done things publicly in recent days to indicate they would want the job. Pennsylvania is the ballgame. Shapiro has highlighted Pennsylvania's importance with the Electoral College. Kelly has signed on to support a pro-labor bill and has discussed what he believes are the high stakes of this race. Again, this is not about me. I mean, this is about the future of this country. Democratic Congresswoman Gwen Moore represents the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin in Congress. People have always tried to quote unquote balance the ticket with the vice presidential pick. We wanted to chat with her about who she thinks could help deliver Wisconsin, an all important battleground state for Harris. I do think that it's really important for her to show some diversity. She is an African American woman. And so I think a very balanced ticket, you know, might be to choose a man. I think governors really have demonstrated their ability to manage. I think that we take Minnesota for granted. My good friend uh, Tim Waltz, I think would be a great 
uh, choice. If you look at the numbers, currently of all the major swing states, Pennsylvania has the most up for grabs electoral college votes, 19 in total. It's why Governor Shapiro's name keeps getting mentioned so often. A surprise pick, of course, is always possible, too. Whoever is selected would likely face off against Senator J.D. Vance in the vice presidential debate. That debate was supposed to happen in mid-August, but is currently on hold as the country awaits who Harris's Democratic vice presidential pick will be. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Now to the latest on a new fire burning in Sweetgrass County. Firefighters are still trying to get a hold of the Diamond Fire, which has already burned to over 600 acres, sparked near Big Timber. The fire just northeast of the Gray Cliff Mill flared up Saturday, and it can be seen from Interstate 90. Starting with a lightning strike, it roared in acreage on Sunday evening. According to those in the area, the flames are spreading towards the site of an old burn from the Shanks Basin Fire, which started two weeks ago. The fire is 10% contained. Scattered showers and storms are showing up on Doppler radar this afternoon, but it's really tomorrow we're going to focus on the possibility of getting a little bit of moisture on the ground. Meanwhile, that could push a little bit of the smoke out of the way, at least close to the surface. Some of that haze will hang around for us, but as the hotter temperatures build in, if you've been enjoying the cool down, the heat is coming back, and it looks like we could hit some triple-digit highs. We'll break down the seven-day forecast for you in just a few minutes. The chance of additional fires starting is very likely as our hot and dry conditions continue. Many areas of Montana have issued fire restrictions already with more likely on the way. And officials say it doesn't take too much to spark a fire. Anything from campfires to cigarettes and even your vehicle presents a risk. So it includes more than just campfires, right? Uh, cigarettes, uh, if you're towing a trailer, uh, make sure you don't have chains dragging on the ground and creating sparks. Uh, when you go in you, and park, make sure you're not parking over the top of dry fuels uh, because that, that can uh, not only start a wildfire, but it, you could lose your vehicle potentially as well. The Montana DNRC has a website to find all those fire restrictions currently in Montana. In a state like Montana, known for its small businesses, becoming an entrepreneur at the age of 13 is already pretty impressive. Tonight, we meet a Lewis and Clark eighth grader running a car detailing business, not for a profitable summer job, but to enrich his education. Our Charlie Kleps tells us how. Every year, eighth graders from around the city of Billings get the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. Now, it's a pricey trip, and typically families pay for it themselves. But one student here at Lewis and Clark is getting creative to see how much he could help pitch in. This isn't how most teenagers like to spend their precious summer months. Vacuum in hand, cleaning out cars. And Liam McDermott was no different. He is a typical 13 year old and uh, loves video games and screen time and hanging out with his friends. But for this eighth grader, this isn't a chore. It's now a full fledged successful business. He has really showed me how much of a hard worker he is this summer. You might wonder how a teenager like Liam could be talked into this in the first place. Well, for this 13 year old, it all started as a way to pay for a school trip to our nation's capital. I wanted to go on the DC trip to kind of explore things. And for Liam's parents, helping pay for the trip was non-negotiable. If you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to help pay for it because this is quite a bit of money. Liam had a goal of raising a thousand dollars, half the price of the trip. His mom was skeptical he'd reach it. I just thought it would be a good summer project and something for him to kind of see how much someone had to work to allow him to take that trip. But the fundraiser took off. So much so, it's now become a business. I didn't see this taking off quite in the direction that it's going. I thought it was just going to be like detailing friends' cars and stuff, and then friends told friends and it got bigger. Liam plans to continue working on cars for summers to come. You can make quite a bit of money with doing this, and there's always cars that need to be detailed. A student filling a need, and his mother couldn't be prouder. I can see the adult in him now, and that's pretty impressive. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.
A boy remains in medical care tonight after an ATV crash in the Pryor Mountains. The Carbon County Sheriff's Office says the juvenile male left the road as he was driving, fell 30 feet off a cliff. A technical rope rescue team lifted him out where he was taken to Intermountain Health by an air helicopter. A Montana man is turning a near-death tragedy into motivation. On July 5th of last year, Chris Disburro was riding his motorcycle along Highway 89 toward Livingston when he was hit by a drunk driver trying to pass. Chris's story could have ended that day, but instead he's using the crash to help others. MTN's Edgar Cedillo has more. In the shadow of Immigrant Peak, Chris Desboro was riding his motorcycle along Highway 89 over a year ago when a vehicle hit him and dragged him nearly 300 feet at 100 miles per hour. I think the worst part was I didn't see him coming. So it was a total shock as it threw me forward and then the bike went down. I was underneath the bike. The cars behind him did come to a stop. Several people rushed over to help Chris. A young lady stood in the middle of the road and she just had her hands up to her face and she was horrified and she couldn't do anything. While Chris was recovering from the accident that could have taken his life, his next mission was already on his mind. And I thought, you know what? The amount of people that have helped me in my life, maybe it's now time to start helping people back again. Two strangers who helped Chris on Highway 89 were EMTs from the Paradise Valley Fire Department. And that was pretty cool, and I didn't even know them at the time. And then six months later, I turned up at the station asking, can I join as a volunteer? And they're like, oh yeah, Chris, we were there when you were I'm like, <laughs> fantastic, I appreciate it. <laughs> you don't know how much I appreciate it. Eric Newhouse is the captain okay, of operations action. at the fire department. He remembers a day that he was at the station. When he walked in, he got a standing ovation. We were all, I mean, first of all, when you have a motorcycle versus car is what we call it, it's usually not a good call. Newhouse said he was also on the scene of Chris's crash and he's been blown away by his determination. He got right on it, got through the course, aced the course. I'll throw that in there. But it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, to see him walking at all was pretty cool, never mind coming to volunteer. Kind of a badass. <laughs> but here we are a year on. Chris spent months of studying, shadowing other members of the department, all while recovering from his own injuries. I had damage to my left knee as well, and of course all the scarring on the right foot as well. Uh, you get a little bit of pain when you bend down. But again, it's not insurmountable. And when you do in, go in on a, a live patient who's in pain, you forget your own stuff. He's now been an EMT for several months. But to date, um, I've been out on 83 calls in the valley, mostly medical. He says he isn't done. Biking is one of Chris's favorite hobbies and has raised money for other fire departments. Now his next goal is to raise money for his own department. Um, I was hoping to do a ride from Spokane back to um, Emigrant this year on my bicycle, which is actually another 555 miles. And I was hoping to do that and raise money for our fire station. But I may have to put this off a year, I think, until this foot hopefully gets even better. But it's not gonna stop you? It's not gonna stop me, absolutely not. <laughs> Still to come on the 430 News tonight here on Q2, to rent or to buy? That's the question that many people are facing as they find themselves in an unstable housing market with prices too steep to buy. We're going to break down the options. And the heat is kicking back into high gear this week after a slight cool down. Ed is going to let us know what we can expect with those temperatures as they go back up. Stay with us.